Hey, what are you doing over there? <laughs> you, you're looking at Jaira's backpack. You want to you walk Jaira to school this morning? You rubbing face. He's rubbing face. He's really, really rubbing face. Ding 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 me and you talk when I walk to school. Yeah, we're doing it. All right, let's go. Dad, do you want? All right, it's it's madness. Time to go for a walk. Hi. Where are you, gosh, Toby? Wait, <laughs> I can't see you. Hi, hi, hi. We're walking to school. Oh, it's so. Jimmy, 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 Jangy. Hi, say hi. Hi. We're walking to school. Let me do that again. That was really. It's really sunny and bright. It's really today. sunny and bright. In the mornings, we're walking to school. What is the revolution? The oh, revolution? I mean rapture. The rapture? Yeah. What is it? When is it? Oh, when is it? You know. <laughs> no, I don't. But I study to see when it is. Do you think it's like next year or? <laughs> uh, I don't know when it is. I study and watch and look for it. What I, if it's on your birthday? It could be. It would be everybody's birthday. But it would like technically still be yours. It would turn. Like, yeah. No, we're all gonna. It'll be like a birthday for everybody in the heaven. And then I'll turn. School bus. Hey. All right, we're going to school. See you in a minute. Oh my goodness, what is this? What is the sunshine? Where are we? Planet Earth. What do you think? This place is gonna last forever? <laughs> oh, that's really the question I have this morning. Oh, how am I? I'm so. I have to calm down. Let me just. Psalms 143. Let the morning bring word of your unfailing love, and then you can show me the way. You've got to establish yourself as a born again Christian. Your citizenship is in heaven, not of earth. You're an ambassador here. For a journeyman, like an alien in a foreign land, with a. Uh, a tenant and a calling and a understanding from another country you live your life now as in a foreign country representing the foreign land that's heaven okay that's where Jesus is I go to prepare a place for you alright and if I say that I will come back to take you where I am. Plain and simple. Okay, my name is Justin Foy. I do a rapture walk. That's what I call them. It's a prayer walk. Walk and talk, preaching it out, talking issues, talking rapture, talking the soon return of Jesus Christ. Why it's biblical and why it's important and why it's soon. I walk my daughter to school. Thank you, Jesus, for that ability been one of the one that a really big prayer I had in life for these kids was that I would be able to live in a community where I can safely have my kids walk and back to school and back and we moved to Texas last year we've been here almost one year and I'm thanking the Lord for it every day the world okay look here we go. Your church organization, not the body of Christ, the church organizations primarily does not believe that Jesus is coming back. They don't believe it. They don't teach it. And then most primarily, of course there's all kinds of churches, but primarily speaking, they do not believe in the rapture and they do not believe that Jesus comes back to rule on the earth for 1,000 years. It's called amillennialism. A meaning nay, no. Anti. Like antichrist. <laughs> Very similar. Oh.
personal story. We went to church yesterday. I'm not going to say the church, not going to say the lead pastor because I do love these people. And it's our close kind of church. But I ended up talking to the lead pastor and I was like excited and talking to him about, you know, kind of the stuff I say about the return of Jesus and it's soon in Israel. And the look on that dude's face, I knew right away. I was like, wait a minute, are you? You're not a oh, millennialist, are you? And he went, oh yes, very much. I couldn't, whoops, sorry, where was I? The, I had to delete space. I keep saying I'm gonna do it and I forget. Now here we are. Your church does not believe. And so my personal story, when I talked to the guy and then he said, yeah, I'm, I'm, I go, what? You're not a millennialist, are you? Yeah, I am. And I, like, I couldn't look at him anymore. I shielded my eyes from him. A little overdramatic. And I could just, you know, I, had, I, I wasn't going to sit there and debate him, right? And he's like, I know, I know, there's all these scriptures that, you know, but you can answer them. There's a way, you know, I'm really good at Revelation. I can answer all the questions. Number one, if you're an amillennialist, you cannot take the Bible literally. You can't take it literally. The plain reading of the Bible is pre-tribulation, rapture, the seven years left from the Daniel prophecy about Israel. Here, Israel, it's back, 1948, now it's a nation. One generation. And then the return of Jesus Christ, literally, to reign on the earth for a thousand years. It is the plain reading of text. So why in the world do churches and these pastors all over America and all over the world teach something that's not the plain reading of scripture. Well, I'll tell you number one reason why. It's Catholic. From 300, you know, 400 AD till now, even through the Protestant, they didn't have it all right. They just, dude, progressive revelation. They say, this is a new, this is new. Dude, they wouldn't let you read the Bible. Wake up, of course, it's a little bit new in some sense. It's not, though, if you go look at the ancient church fathers before Catholicism, from after Paul and John and all those guys to 300, they all talk about an understanding of a return of Jesus Christ, the catching away, the seven years of tribulation that are still left for the Jews, and the return in the thousand-year reign. It's all about that for the first 300 years or so. And then you get Augustine, and then you get the Catholic Church, you get the Nicolaitans, you get the Pope system, and look what it does. It takes the Bible away. Well, you can't read it. Oh, only a, a pastor or a Pope or some priest or cardinal can read it to you. And there was a literacy, the Dark Ages. So when they say, what's well, only a new thing? First of all, it's not true. It's part of the original. It's in the Bible. It's the initial text is what we learn from. And then the first 300 years, that's who teaches the return of Jesus Christ. And then, of course, in the sense, it's new because they didn't let you read it. The common people weren't allowed. And so literacy in its own only is a modern revelation. Well, it's only new. You, you have to go. It's the same heart. It's only new. It's only this person who taught it. And you got to go back to the 1700s. And you got to go back to the, you know, the 1500 years of church history to understand these things. That's what we've always taught. You've always taught it and it's wrong. It leads to what? The church system. To say, no, there's no return of Jesus Christ. There's no millennial reign. He's not coming back. It's kingdom now. You have to rely on this system and it's going to spread all over the world and everybody's going to become Christian and that's our job is to bring the kingdom here on earth. Wrong. That's not New Testament. That's not Paulinian gospel to the Gentiles. The gospel to the Gentiles is that you are born again and you are no longer a citizen of earth. Your citizenship is in heaven. Jesus himself said, my kingdom is not of this earth. If I wanted, I could call down 10,000 angels, 10,000 leg you know, legions of angels. 
Well, that's millions. So, and he even said that to Pilate, and he said it to all of you know, speak, speak, Jesus. Are you, are you a God? Are you the Son of God? Are you a king? <laughs> not of this earth. So now they say the kingdom is here now. No, it is not. The second problem is, well, where's Satan? Is he bound? Is he bound? They can't answer that. They have to allegorize that. Well, he's bound because you can, you know, claim authority in the name of Jesus. Yes, you bet you can. And you have to, and you need to every day. But he still goes around, then he leaves you and goes and finds somebody else he can devour. He's not bound, like Revelation 20 says, with a chain and thrown in the abyss. They can't take that literally. Satan, Paul explains it to you. Satan roams around like a roaring lion looking for someone he can devour. Is that you? It's such a blind Laodicean style thought. Oh, in America, we don't, what do you mean? It's good, it's all good, go have a good day, be better. Is that how it is in Afghanistan? Is that how it is in Iran? Is that how it is in China? Is that how it is all over the world? No, we got to spread the gospel there. Yeah, you bet we do. But who's controlling those areas? Principalities, devils, and demons. They are roaming this earth. It's not scary. They're afraid. Not, not the reason why they don't teach that in churches is they're afraid. Maybe they don't believe, but they're afraid to talk about it because they might lose people. If you talk about the truth, about our landscape, our spiritual landscape, you'll get hundreds and hundreds of views. If you talk about how to be good and great and rich, which I don't, dude, I, I, I think being rich is a blessing from God. But if that's what you talk about, that's your aim and goal, millions and millions. Right now, we are in a war. They deny the war. The greatest lie Satan ever told is that he doesn't exist. If he doesn't exist, then there's no war. What does this lead to? Well, look at what the Pope says. Number one, who are aliens? What are these things? What are demons? What are they? Well, they're already starting to lead to the great deception well if they're from another planet and they're alien and they're not from earth then they're not descendants of adam and eve which means they're not under original sin which means they don't need jesus do they they don't need forgiveness they're not under original sin they're not a descendants of adam and eve but they're physical creatures created by God, so they're sinless. And they are our light brothers, our saviors that will come and help the world. That's what they're preparing for. You see, Paul talks about it all throughout the New Testament, and so does John. Yes, you've heard that the Antichrist is coming, but I tell you, there are many Antichrists, and they're, all he they're, they're here now. Not to say that it's allegorized, there is a antichrist coming the seven year tribulation period it's literal but even now the world is going to wax worse and worse in the end times it'll get right in the long list of all the bad crazy stuff that's going to happen people will be lovers of themselves and they'll hate this and they'll, love will grow cold and Okay, it doesn't, the plain text does not say that everything gets better and better and better. It's on a path track of better and better and better. And then the kingdom of Christianity will reign on the world forever and ever. First of all, it's already been a thousand years, Augustine. You were wrong. So they can't take anything literally now. We are at the end of the age. It's, you have to rightly divide, it's dispensational. 
They, and what else does this lead to, these amillennialists? It leads to replacement theology that says all the promises for the Jews are now for the Christian and the Jews are cut out. So when you say, hey, 1948, look, Israel, Ezekiel 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, it's all happening. Look, it's right here. They immediately can't stand that. No, no, there's no Israel. It's not the real Israel. It's not right, Israel. That's an allegory. These are, no, it's for the Christian church. You, the war, you can't see literal scripture coming to place now because it's all an allegory. Yes, all the promises are yes and amen to the Christian it doesn't negate the promises God made to Abraham for his children, his physical, literal children. We're the spiritual children of Abraham. See, God told Abraham, count the grains of sand. Those are as many as your children. Count the stars. Those are your children. Two sets of children, the physical children of Abraham, which includes Ishmael and all of the stuff that he's got to go through and Isaac, but the promise goes to Isaac and Jacob for the land. There are other promises for Ishmael. They've got their land. <laughs> but, they, they, but for Ishmael and Esau, that's not enough. They want no promise for Jacob. Kill them all. Wipe them out. That's what they teach and what they want. When they can't even see that their own father excuse me, and the Holy Spirit and the workings of Scripture give them a blessing. They have an inheritance. But they're going to go off and be goats and it'll be a separation of sheep and goats at the end. And then there'll be a thousand year reign of Jesus Christ. Praise you, Lord. Makes me angry because what it does, it negates the truth of where you are right now. It, 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 it puts the blinders on. If there's no Satan, then there's no war. <laughs> so we, th this is what it leads to. Sometimes it seems initially like just a little bit of a different theological conversation. Just a little bit of, belie I believe this, you believe that. At first it seems that way. But then the steps towards of what your doctrine leads to can veer you off way off the path at first the fork in the road is small but then way down the road you're going to deny israel you're going to deny the return of jesus christ you're going to deny 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 it's what it'll end up doing uh, uh, all millennialism which says denies the return of Jesus Christ in a thousand year reign, denies Revelation 20, denies the literal interpretation of the Bible. I mean, how foolish! And that's why you see ecumenicalism, that's why you see the roots of Catholicism in all the churches still. And then when you get people who like come to God, they realize, man, this is messed up. I need it. Where do they go? The Catholic Church. For some reason. You know, the roots of Catholicism and all these religions. And how do they answer? What was the sermon yesterday that this man said? What is the answer? He said the syllabus of the Bible. Where did he point yesterday? He pointed to Micah, whatever. Do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly before your God. That's the answer to the Bible, the guy said. No, it is not. You are wrong. That is not the answer. Jesus is the answer. Jesus did it. Thank you, Jesus. That's the answer. But they don't preach that. They preach, you follow this, that's the answer. No, it is not. If it is, then Jesus wouldn't have had to come. If you could do these things, if you could be if you could be righteous then Jesus would never have had to come he had to come because you cannot do it it makes me so angry that it's it's like everywhere and then when guys like me and you 
talk about the return of Jesus Christ, it's like you're a freaking pariah. You're you're insane. <laughs> but when we, it's the literal interpretation. <clears throat> I, was, I was preparing so much this morning for this, but it's like, I think bottom line, that's the answer. They cannot interpret the Bible literally. All of Revelation takes place over your head and in your mind, metaphorically. There's no, you know, Satan, he's bound, huh? Okay, that's not what Paul teaches. And Paul even said at the end that there are already abandoned him. Every one of the churches, they've already gone astray. And what did they make? The church system. And that church system birthed into the Catholic Church, which created the Dark Ages. And you are not allowed to read this. And that's the same message you're given by these amillennialists. It's an, an, it's an allegory. It's metaphor. Don't read it literally. What a lie. Were all the prophecies about Jesus' birth literal? Huh? Did he literally come, my friend? You get, I mean, let's get, that's what it'll come down to. I've even heard family members, I won't say who, and people I know close, eventually this seed of lie gets so deep that they'll say, well, I don't even know if Abraham was real. It's all just kind of a metaphor. Look at where it goes. It takes your foundation of truth away. No longer can you use it as fact. And if it is in fact, well, then it could be shaken, couldn't it? It could be changed. It could mean, maybe it doesn't mean that. Maybe it's just up to interpretation here. Even the historical parts of the Bible now could be shaken. Maybe that didn't happen. Well, Israel doesn't really deserve the land then, do they? Hamas, Palestine, they've got a point. They've got a case that, you know, their terrorism is because they're uh, subjugated by, um, what do they do in South America there? The uh, segregation, no, it's, uh, ah, what's that word? You know, and that they 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 took the land from Palestinians. <laughs> That's how easy they can take if they can take away your history, they can take away truth in a flat second. Well, it's not true. Well, guess what? Go read the freaking history books. There's no Palestine. It was a name of poison. <laughs> what an idiot. People like that who drive fast like that, not consider, he probably, did you hear that? He probably broke his car and there's children walking around. Look, I was an idiot like that too. We all are. We need Jesus. The guy driving his car, revving it. Well, it could be a child right around the corner, you dummy. And did you hear the noises? He probably busted his engine. What an idiot. Guess what? I'm that kind of idiot too. You can see it on my walk and talk. Sometimes I just freak out. I need Jesus too. And there is an enemy of our soul here. And he goes around like a roaring lion to whom he can consume. Well, he can't consume you under the blood of Jesus Christ. That part is correct. But the chain that throws him away so he can no longer be here at all is not, hasn't happened. And that happens in Revelation 20. Go read it. Jesus comes down with his bride and he casts the devil away for a thousand years, it says. And Jesus reigns for a thousand years and then he looses the devil again. This is a literal happenstance to prove out the promises that are physical and literal for Israel and celestial and spiritual for the church. Amen. Just like that dude right there, I also need Jesus and I do stupid things all day long. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Protect us. Angels, people who need prayer, healing, comment, ask your needs. Put your prayer needs on here. I'll join you and say, yes, Lord. We need you, Jesus. I have a, I'm always pitching my Foytown Miracle book, but I have a, I have a lot of material on my justinfoy.xyz. It's all for free. I have one called Rapture Versus Return. Scroll down into my little, um, you know, short stories, long stories, and then like educational papers that I've written. 
One is called Rapture versus Return. And I discuss the like seven main differences between the rapture and the return of Jesus Christ. And they're very important to look at because you, then it describes, you can see and understand that they're two different events. And that Israel still has a program that God is going to finish because his promises never come back void. The calling and anointing of God is irrevocable, and that includes Israel. And we, right now they're in unbelief, but God has still a, a mission to do with them. And the rapture is what's going to make them extremely jealous. And then they'll realize it was Jesus all along. You don't have to get on that boat. You can get on the ticket home right now by just asking Jesus into your heart. And ask him to show himself to you. Say it out loud. And Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock, and anyone who asks, I will come in and dine with him. Anyone. It's free grace right now. That day ends, Revelation chapter 4, after the rapture, when the church goes up, you're in a whole different program, and you're going to have to face the mark of the beast, and you're going to have to face the wrath of God and the wrath of the devil all at the same time. It's coming. It's literally how you interpret the Bible. So you want to go allegory? You can't debate somebody who says it's all allegory because then there's no more foundation. Fine, goodbye. That's how I say to these people, goodbye. You want to be, it's no, not literal? There's nothing to talk about. You can't. I can't use any examples. I can't use scripture. I can't. How do you know Jesus said that? They don't. How can you use any of it? Eventually, their own salvation will be questioned and they'll question yours to put you in a religious system that they want for control. Screw it. I'll never deal with them again. I'll make... You, you, you know, a little bit. But if you're taking literal foundations away, you can't debate. It's over. Goodbye. So in that case, I just say, uh, you know, you want to use scripture, then you better be a literalist. <laughs> and then that way, otherwise, how do I know you really believe what it says? Anyway, okay, Jesus loves you. This I know. Why? For the Bible tells me so. Well, these people eventually can't use that, can they? Because it's an allegory. Well, maybe he doesn't love you. It's, you know, somebody else. So horrible. Amillennialism is a poison. And it's, sometimes it doesn't seem that way, initial steps. But in the fork in the road, these people will question their own salvation and sometimes completely walk away. So in Jesus' name, I pray for anybody who wants truth, read it literally. Thank you, Lord coming soon prayers for healing write them comments i always love that and i'll join you and you i love it and pray for my family too thank you lord another fire shot all right see you soon god bless